Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. We're looking forward to hearing from our wonderful guest speaker. And uh, we want to thank uh, the, my name is Dawn Ross. I want to thank the, the staff that is here with us today and the student. And also, um, I would love uh, for Teresa to start. Give us a journey, uh, your, your career journey. Tell us a little bit about your current role and how you got to that position. Sure. So I have been in HR for a long time. Um, I started out, I, I went to school for um, my, um, I got my bachelor's degree in English literature. I thought I wanted to be a copywriter and do advertising. So I got a job in New York City for an agency that did that. And I did not like it, I realized. Um, and what I learned in that role was that um, I kind of ended up picking up a lot of administrative tasks for the creatives that I worked with. like business expenses and finding out the right way to process something. Um, and I had never even heard of HR at that point. And so I realized midway through that that was what I was kind of doing in this, in the small agency that I worked and I ended up kind of taking on that HR role and then I liked it. So when I moved back to Boston, um, I got a job as a secretary to a VP of HR for, um, a, a small regional company that did um, hiring for security officers. So from that organization, I went from being, um, I collected a lot of information about data for HR, and then I became a recruiter for the company, and then I became an HR manager for a small district, and then I became the area manager for the Boston um, office. And while I was there, I um, the company was bought it was a small regional company when I started. They got bought by um, Pinkerton, which was a larger um, US-based company. And then they were bought by Securitas, which was an international company. So they're known as Securitas now today in this area too. So um, I had a great um, opportunity in that place to kind of learn HR from a lot of different angles and to deal with a lot of transitions. Um, and then I moved to Washington, DC. And I had a different job working for a publicly traded company. Um, and then when we moved back to Boston again, I, I started um, working for the city of Boston as I was the director of HR for the human res of human resources for public works and transportation departments, um, which was very interesting and very different from what I had been doing from my other positions before, but always um, working with people doing recruiting um, doing a lot of employee relations and things like that. Um, and then when I was at the city, my son got a diagnosis of autism. So while I was there, I realized that, you know, it was hard for me to get services for him. And I just didn't really know a lot about it because it was new to me. Um, and I wanted to kind of work for a company that worked with students who had um, an ASD diagnosis. And that's how I found RCS. I was looking for services for him. Their name had popped up and then they were looking for an HR person. So that's how I ended up at RCS. I've been there almost four years now. Um, I really love it. Um, one, because I obviously my heart is with um, working with these um, children with ASD to help them reach their full potential. Um, and I just am so impressed with the work that they do that I've seen in action. Um, so I work, we work um, with a lot of new grads. We hire a ton of FSU students. Yay. Um, we hire, <laughs> we hire um, a lot of um, brand new grads. It's an entry level position and it's a great career path for um, psych. A lot of criminal justice majors who are interested in behavior do very well at RCS. Um, and if, um, you're interested in ABA applied behavior analysis. That's the method that we use to teach our students. Um, if you're interested and you end up interested in that field, we're a great place to grow. We have um, two different companies that both do ABA, one with younger children, one with up to 22, some in a center-based school setting, some in a home setting, um, and there's um, a pathway for which to get your BCBA, so to become a clinician in applied behavior analysis. So I just think it's a great career path for people. If you love kids, if you like working with people with disabilities, um, that's really what we're looking for. Um, we could train folks to do it, um, but we really need people that have that want and that um, desire to kind of help folks become the best that they can be. 
Well, like just because you brought it up, um, do you have tuition reimbursement at all when they do go for their, their ABA? We're working on that right now. What we have done historically, I think we're in our seventh cohort. We have, um, uh, and right now we have about 12 um, staff going through a Simmons program. And so it's all changed because of COVID, but historically they, they have had the professors come to our learning center in Natick twice a week to teach. So all the staff that are in the program are going to school together. They're talking about the students that they work with every day. So they're seeing what they're learning practically applied. Um, and so, but we think we might change it because we've had a lot of different things since COVID. We're thinking about everything. We're thinking maybe it might be easier to do tuition reimbursement because what we liked about Simmons was that in-person um, experience that our staff right. got and they didn't have to go in town for it. The staff came to us and we just don't know that that's going to be something that we're going to be able to do going forward. So we're de we will definitely do something to support that. Um, and I think it's going to be a tuition reimbursement, but today, right now, we don't have that. We have a relationship with Simmons for the mm -hmm. masters and we also have um, a pathway for folks to get their associates through Fisher College right now. Okay, Those so you have a pathway. programs that we have. That is wonderful. And um, I know with a large company, you have other roles within um, that and uh, within a large nonprofit. Um, can you talk about maybe some of the other entry level roles in, in your company that you've seen, um, you know, some of the students, maybe not, not Framingham State, but, but, but other college students? Um, and also, do you have an internship program? We do. We actually have a, uh, a we have a lot of interns from FSU that have come to work for us through your. Um, is it called the Choice? Yes. Choice program. Yes. So yes. Um, we have staff who started out as interns, became behavior therapists, got their masters through Simmons, and are now BCBAs that came directly from FSU. Um, in addition to the school, which is our you know kind of our main company attached mm -hmm. to the school, we have Many Miracles Early Education and Childcare, which is. Um, a, a child care daycare setting for zero to six. We've had a lot of staff who um, are just looking for a part-time job come through and work there with the students um, in the classroom as well. We is that have, a combined ASD students and um, other students or is it, um, it, you know? Many miracles as a whole is for typically developing students, um, but we do have an integrated preschool program run through our consulting business that has their own separate mm -hmm. um, yeah program for, we call it Rising Stars Integrated oh. Preschool Program, and that's run through the RCS Consulting Company, um, and they push into the Mini Miracles classroom. So they have their separate learning that they do with their peers, and then they each individually go in with their behavior therapist into the Mini Miracles classroom. So Mini Miracles is kind of its own company, but they're related in that we use Mini Miracles mm -hmm. classrooms mm -hmm. and we put our um, younger um, preschool aged students um, through consulting that are getting that ABA support services um, and we push them into Mini Miracles. But we also have special education teachers. There's a variety of administrative roles that we're hiring for at any time. Um, the main things that we're looking for at the Learning Center are the behavior therapists mm -hmm. um, and that's for that and for the home-based services where we do a lot of early intervention internships available at the Learning Center at Mini Miracles. Um, and, you know, a, as I said, a variety of administrative positions. But if you like working with kids, we're a great place to go for you Wonderful. to come and work. Wonderful. And talking about if, if Framingham State students are interested in applying, could you talk about kind of like what um, skills you see or experience or education that you see on a resume that um, kind of says, yeah, I definitely want to call this student. So could you give us some of the skills that you're looking for? Yes, an interest in working with children is a big one. So um, often, um, you know, people have had babysitting or they've worked at the Y or things like that. Those are big flags for us that these are folks that are interested in working with children. Um, also, uh, in terms of majors, if you have an interest, in psychology, it's often a good fit. Early education, education majors, a lot of folks who think they wanna to go to be a teacher, but then they realize they don't, teaching might not be for them, but they still wanna do education in some kind of a capacity. This is a great, um, this is a place that we've seen folks in that kind of bucket be very successful. And another thing which really I found interesting when I started here, because I didn't know, is that a lot of criminal justice majors 
Um, because applied behavior analysis is the study of behavior. Right. So if you're someone who's interested in criminal behavior or juvenile delinquency or things like that, um, it seems to somehow lend itself to people who do really well in this field and then become interested, become, you know, it becomes things, something they want to do and pursue and go get their BCBA. Um, in, on your website, do you have um, a large job portal or could you tell the students a little bit about how to apply for these internships sure. and jobs? Um, you could go to rcslearning.org and click on the apply now button. It's super easy. Um, I think you can click on two things, upload your resume and you're pretty much done. Ooh, so it's a very, very simple application process. Um, uh, that's wonderful. I, I love when you have the upload the resume, you don't have to type everything in. Yeah, so. yeah. That's great. And uh, say you get the, their resume and what are the steps that you usually have from when they submit the resume till maybe they get the next step in the process. And could you give us kind of like a timeline on that? Yes, so um, now it's pretty fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> because we're really looking for folks and we're especially, especially looking for people who are gonna be graduating in May for sure. This is when we start looking for people for next summer. Um, but we're also looking for people who are looking for jobs now as well. Um, but usually you can, uh, if you apply through our website, um, you can expect to receive a response um, just acknowledging your, your um, application. And then the next thing that you'll get, probably with depending on when you apply a day or two, you're gonna get some kind of an acknowledgement from us that we've reviewed your resume. Um, and then if we're going to proceed with the phone screen, that's our typical next step. And that usually takes between 15 minutes to a half an hour and it's a conversation with, um, the applicant to see if they're going to be a good fit or not. So we just kind of go through a, a, a quick kind of um, FAQ about RCS and then a quick um, us getting the FAQs about the applicant to see if they'd be a good fit. And if that works out within a week or two, you're going to be coming in for an interview. So, and then within a few days after that, you would get an offer. Um, so we do try and make it quick. I think usually um, from application to offer, it's about a 14 day turnaround and that's getting a phone screen, having an interview, getting an offer in hand. So um, I think that's pretty quick. Um, we try to move it along quickly. We have only one person doing the, off, doing, doing the interview. So it's a single interview. So we make our decision based on that. So it's not a multi-step process. We try and keep it as simple as possible. Um, and so that we can let people know if they're going to be coming on board or not, because we want them to, and we want that offer in their hands so they can make the decision to come to us before anybody else gets them. That 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 is fantastic. I I think two weeks was the quickest I've heard this week. So, you know, kudos We're to you trying. for doing that. And we the, want the to company. hire. <laughs> um, do you ever have like I know a lot of our education majors during their uh, academic year they they cannot do any sort of internships. But do you have some summer only programs? Absolutely. Summer only jobs. A ton okay. of FSU students come in and. Most of them are getting it for credit for some course or another, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're open to people who need internships for credit, not for credit. We, we probably won't take any for the, we, we've taken them historically in, the, in um, January too. For the, mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the winter for break. Semester. We've done that, but I don't know that we'll do that this year right. with COVID, but always in the summer, we typically, we have a schedule and we'll try and fill it. Um, so if you're interested in an, inter in an internship for the summer, um, January, February is a good time to start applying. We make our decisions, you know, as soon as we start getting candidates in, we start moving on that. And we try and fill like three slots every day. Um, and so some internships require more hours than others in order for um, students to get credit for it. So we would just need to make sure we had enough hours to offer you if that was something that you were looking to do. So the sooner the better for those. What kind of advice would you give to, like um, I know in the last call um, that was on, and we've had several first year students, what types of things would um, really help them to be able to stand out, um, you know, whether it be, you know, somebody uh, very involved in leadership roles on campus or part-time jobs or what, do, what kind of things do you like to see in a resume from students? Um, interest in other people 
interest in their communities, um, participating in com being in, an involved member. So volunteer, of their volu a lot of volunteer work. Yeah, whatever community that is, um, that you're an active participant in it, and that you're interested um, in in working with folks. Um, so leadership roles, yes. We also just people who are you know interested in a variety of things and trying things out. I think, as I said um, before. Our biggest thing is if you want to work with children and you have a passion for it, we can train you. <laughs> We're happy to train you. It's just you have to kind of have that um, want to be around folks, to be around young people, and to help them. So anything that involves that, whether it's volunteering at your, um, you know, your faith organization or um, your community, um, or just being an active part in your, you know, high school community working with other students or mentoring and things like that. Those are things that really appeal to us. Do you see any trends in, in your field that, um, you know, just as the, the, the field is a, as a whole, do you see any, any trends that, you know, students might need to know about or, or research? Um, and um, how important is it that the applicant know about your, your um, RCS and what you do? We love it when they know about RCS. Oftentimes when we um, are interviewing, giving a phone screen, we'll, we'll, that will come up. Um, usually we'll just say, oh, did you get a chance to check us out? And that really helps us know if they're really interested or not. If they say, oh no, you know, the ad popped up, so I applied or, you know, someone from school mentioned I might like it and they gave me a link and I just applied. And I didn't look at anything, well, it might, it might work out once we talk and you realize what an awesome place we are. You're going to want to come here and you start researching us. But it does help us know that you're seriously considering um, working in an organization like ours. So that really um, appeals to us as an employer. Um, in terms of, did you just say, did you say trends? Yeah, some, do you see any trends in, in the field, in, in um, the fields that you have? I don't really have. know about any trends in the mm -hmm. field. Um, I know that like to get your BCBA, the rules are changing in a few years. So a lot of um, people who are coming in now are keen to be able to get supervision if that's what they're interested in doing. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't know any yeah. trends just for in terms of like applicants and who we, we know that, you know, they're serious candidates. We often take that into consideration if they are interested in the field or if they've researched RCS at all. And um, how important are, are, is the follow-up that students have when you're, after you've, you've interviewed them? Um, is it important to you to get a, a thank you, uh, either, you know, a quick um, email or a follow-up? And how do you feel about, you said your process is really quick. How, how would you feel if a student in a week, say they interviewed a week and they didn't hear something, um, are you open to maybe getting, uh, you know, answering um, a student that just inquiring about the status of their application? Yes, we are. Um, usually we'd be more, you know, we wouldn't expect that someone who applied and didn't get an interview to be following up constantly. But if you had an interview, you should expect to follow up from us. And if you haven't heard one, you sure, certainly should follow up um, because we should be letting you know one way or the other if we're moving forward or not. Um, and we, so we do want to hear from you if you haven't heard back from us, because we do want to be responsive. We want to be known as a responsive employer and we want to get you in. If you're, if, if somehow you slip through the crack, through the cracks and you're going to be a great person to work with, let us know. <laughs> um, in addition to the career fairs that you work with us, do you do a company-wide career fairs at all um, that you do? Uh, of course, right now, everybody's doing it virtually. We haven't really done that. We have considered it in the past. I know in the past they have done it. We've had open houses um, and you know offered to have people come in to check out the facility. Um, they weren't very successful in the past. I, I think that um, it's just not, it just hasn't seemed to be something that students are, are ready to do. Um, when we've been doing, um, like I know for our special ed teachers, they created kind of a virtual tour for them. Um, to, to kind of show them what the facility looks like because we're conducting everything virtually until you come in, even um, our orientation, the, the two week orientation is virtual. Mm -hmm. You're not coming in person to anything until like the end, um, to, you know, till the very end. So, um, yeah. 
wonderful. I mean, it's it's changed. Um, students uh, have a different process now as well as as you know administrators. Um, do, is there any uh, before I open it up to questions? Is there anything else that you'd like to say that I haven't covered that might help um, students in the in the um, application process? In the application process. Um, no, just um, in, in the application process, just try and have as much information um, that we can read your resume and have a good idea of what you're looking for and what it is that interests you in our organization. Um, and you can do that through your cover letter or through your resume somehow. Um, and, you know, I think that that really helps. So we can get a quick snapshot of what, who you are, what you're looking for, and what you can bring to the table in our organization. Wonderful. Well, uh, those that's all my 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 questions, but I'm going to open it up to this wonderful staff and maybe Nicole has something that she'd like to ask. Um, any questions? Jill? Yes. Um, you, okay, so you mentioned that um, the BCBA rules are going to be changing in a couple of years. Can you share a little bit? Um, oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I was just wondering if you knew, like, um, if there was something um, in specific Mm -hmm. I that. don't know specific. Mm -hmm. I know that I think it's in 2022. So if you haven't okay. been in the process, um, I'm not sure exactly if it's being in the process to get your BCBA or if you have to have passed the exam by then. Okay. That it's going to be um, changing. There's going to be right now, I think you need 1500 hours of supervision um, in order to be able to um, pass. And, and be able to sit for the exam. So I think they're changing it to a lot of kind of what if scenarios. If this, then 1500 hours of supervision. If that, then 2000 hours of supervision. Okay. Plus this, like if this, then that scenarios. And it's gonna lead to, I think a longer time that maybe at work, doing the hours of work with students prior to them letting you sit for the BCBA. That's what I think it involves, but it's, we have a lot of experts on site that are BCBAs, so I leave that to them to be able to explain it to those folks who are really um, moving in that direction. No, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Because it's just, we work, it, sometimes it can be very daunting. You know, we've got, what is it now, 36 undergraduate majors here. So everybody literally wants a different career. It can be really daunting for us as career counseling staff to stay on top of all the changes that are going on in every direction. A lot of times I um, know stuff very like high level and then this is what happens, X number of years go by and they change the standards um, you know, all over again. So that at least is um, helpful that I can at least get it on someone's radar um, yeah, you know, that I'm I think working, I'm working with a, a good thing to let folks know who are thinking about a path of a BCBA is every program is different too. A lot of them have different supervision requirements. I know that there's direct service with the students and then indirect hours, which can be observing or creating materials. So each program is different on how they expect. So it depends on where they're applying for grad school for those things. Mm -hmm. um, but those BACB requirements, those 1500, 2000 hours, those are for everybody who's everybody. gonna sit for the exam. Yeah. Um, so they would just, you know, if, if it's a, like I said, it's a great field for people interested in education in a different way. Um, and it's a great place for people who, you know, like behavior and wanna study that and figure, try and get um, to, 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 the, to, to, to help people be able to improve their lives by improving their behaviors. Thanks. Well, I'll tell you, Teresa, that you're a wealth of information, and um, I, you know, I, I can thank you from the bottom of my heart. You, you've been there for everything, all the career events. You've been in the gym when it's been 120. Oh, that's you usually have, Stephanie. Uh, you, but you've come, you know, you, you were no, at uh, the mocktail mixer. You've been to the, the, the Suitable Solutions before. Yeah. We and love you, FSU students. I mean, we're right down the street, so it's a great fit for us. Um, and they've all, like I said, you know, we have staff on site that have come up through the internship program and now have their master's and are, are still working for us. That's so we wonderful. appreciate that. Um, we know the value of an FSU education and we, why wouldn't we tap into it? 
well, thank you so much for, you know, I would say you're spending, you know, the, the, the hour with us today, your time, your talents, all your treasures, and you really gave us a wealth of knowledge about RCS and many miracles. So we wish you all the best of luck and we hope to see you virtually soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you.